on, garden invaders. We're here to answer a distress call from a fireman. Oh, it's a long way down. Who is in desperate need of some emergency services in his garden? Bye, guys. Welcome to Garden Invaders, the show that boldly goes where no gardeners have gone before. Our mission to make beautiful gardens. Morning, Charlie. You look organised, mate. I am. I've got my design. We've got all the landscaping materials. We've got all the big, strong invaders. But there's one vital ingredient missing, isn't there? Yes, the plants. The garden owner has to answer my tricky horticultural questions to win all these glorious plants. Right then. And we need as many plants as possible, Charlie. Today we're in Kings Norton in Birmingham to invade Lee Sullivan's garden. He's being helped out by his nephew, Richard, who we're very pleased to hear is a bricklayer. Lee had to retire early from the fire service due to an industrial injury. He has lots of time for the garden, loads of ideas, but not a clue where to start. Oh, my word, look at that! <laughs> it's better than me! Oh, that's magic! <laughs> I'm afraid to say, Lee, we haven't started yet, mate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's Fair not enough. that bit of the programme. That's the sort of reaction we want at the end, though. Yeah, we've got it in the can now, it doesn't matter. We might use that bit. <laughs> So, what's your excuse? Because you're retired, you've got all this time on your hands. Oh, I know, it's not much of an excuse, but I've got that many ideas floating around in my head. And I try one idea, like I built the wall, if you can call it a wall. I was going to build a pond, someone gave me a pond liner, because I watch all these television programmes about ponds. And, uh, yeah, well, yes, <laughs> I blame you. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah, and, <clears throat> I don't I was, see a pond. I got the hole dug, and uh, someone pinched my pond liner. I thought you were just going to say someone pinched the pond. No, no, so oh. I buried the cat in it in the end, so if you come across a cat... <laughs> that is a pet cemetery now. <laughs> oh. there's, a, there's a dead cat and a gecko in there. So you didn't, you gave up on the pond idea, yeah. and then you went for, like, wildlife, just weeds? <clears throat> well, it was going to be a vegetable garden, but uh, by the time I dug it over, it was too late, so winter came, so I overwintered it, so I've got all the terms. Now, you've got a secret weapon here. Yeah? Yeah, Rich. He's oh. a brickie. You're a brickie? Yeah. That's what awesome. ah. So called, so called. Oh, excellent. You're saved now. Yeah, we're saved. I'm going, I'm going down the cafe. <laughs> <laughs> right, you, we're across the road. OK. All right, win some plants, please. Oh, thank you. Right, well, I think, you know, we've got a good space here. I think we're going to leave the wall in. Okay. It's going to be a nightmare taking it out. Cheers, Dan. So what I've done, some of the design. Morning, Dave. Can you get the weeds up, yeah? And some of those plants moved temporarily. We'll put them back in again. We'll come up with a, a simple design here. I think what we want to try and do is enclose the area right. with trellising. Yes. Okay, so it's basically creating a little courtyard. It's going to screen good. off the shed nicely at the back. And here we're going to have a, an archway coming into it. So it's sort of quite formal, yep. central, um, stepping up onto this area and using the brick pavers at the back. Yep. Yeah, around maybe a central pond. Lovely. Yeah. Nice grass. And then some break, breaking up with some more paving towards the back and then planting around the, around the sides, really, and trying to formalise it, make it quite formal. Yeah. What do you think? Like it? I think you'll love it. Yeah, yep. good. Nice yep. one. There's your T-shirt. Brilliant. Right. Yep. Go and put it on. Okay. And come and get stuck in. Well done. Oh, we've got a bricky. You always want one of them. Lee, your neighbour's got lots of colour yeah. in the garden. Beautiful. It's lovely. Beautiful. And we've got lots of beautiful plants for you. Ooh. We've got some shrubs that can give you some structure in the garden. You probably recognise that one. I do, I do. What is it then? Um, bay tree. Way. And then over here, we've got even more shrubs. Quite a lot of colour, but also some box here, which could give you sort of a hedge maybe, but I can't tell you what's going on. And then an unusual caryopteris. Unusual because of the foliage, it's sort of really bright yellow, which is quite different. And then some of my favourite plants, perennials, because they put the sort of big wow factor into the garden. Lots of colour and foliage effects. Really, really pretty. And the last group to cover up that very ugly garage of yours. <laughs> some climbers, which are going to give you colour, evergreen, so look good all year round. Fantastic. And then over there, the finishing touches, a nice chimney to keep you warm mm. in the evenings. You can cook on it fab, but that is Rich's department. He thinks he's just laying bricks all the time, doesn't he? Oh, I won't be seeing that then. 
All right, yeah. let me tell you a bit more about these. So our first group of plants are both evergreen shrubs, and you identified this correctly, bay tree, Loris nobilis, and they used to use it to make sort of wreaths for victorious people coming back from wars and stuff like that. Of course, today we use it for cooking. Um, this one has been clipped into a topiary lollipop shape. If you're gonna trim them, don't use garden shears because it makes black lines on the leaves, so you use secateurs to actually clip them into shape. And then a pretty abelia down there, that's abelia grandiflora. Grandiflora meaning large flowers. And it's quite an elegant shrub, but it needs to be against a wall if you're in a, a cold area. Uh, it needs that protection. So Lee, your first question, mate. If you saw a red admiral in your garden, what would you be looking at? Is it a bird, a poppy, or a butterfly? Uh, is it a battleship? No, that wasn't an option. I'd go for the butterfly. Well done, you're right, mate. No <laughs> problems there. So we've got the shrubs, so just get an invader to carry them away Thank before you. we're blown away. If we knock that top course off, Mm. Back to there, mm. then build two courses to about here, and then put three slabs or four slabs, whatever you fancy. Great. One step, that'll do that. That'll do it then. Yeah. Lee's got a lovely garden here, it feels really nice, very informal there, but what I want to do is formalise the end here, make it a nice little courtyard space using strong symmetry, strong proportions and geometry. First thing we've got to do is screen this shed off because it's just pretty ugly and it sort of loses the illusion of the whole space. And here we're going to have some paving, but we're also going to screen, create an enclosure throughout this whole garden. So you've got intimacy, privacy, seclusion, a nice little party spot down here. And again, going with the formality, we're going to have some more paving here, probably use reclaimed bricks that are already here, and have a sunken pond in here, not too deep, but giving uh, Dave a few hassles already, scratching his head like that, as he often does. And then here, we're going to have an archway. Formal again, central way into the space. The eye is going to be drawn from the top of the garden all the way through here. See the pond, see the paving. Nice spot to come at the end of the garden. This is for group two, shrubs, and we've got some really nice plants here. We've got hebes, which used to be known as veronicas. They've got these lovely purple flowers, purple pink flowers, and they're a great shrub because they're evergreen, but they stay quite compact and rounded. And maintenance wise, all you really need to do is after they've finished flowering, just trim off the old flower spikes, and that'll keep them very compact. And then box, great for making hedges. It's a really good plant for hedging very, very slow growing, which is good because it means you don't have to clip it too often. Then lastly, we've got Caryopteris cross clandinensis, and this one's called Worcester Gold because it's got these gold green foliage and lovely deep blue flowers, so the contrast is really good. With that one, it likes a free draining soil, so it won't like it if it's really wet, and it does like full sunshine. Are you ready for the question? I'm all ears. Once this flower has shed its petals, it leaves an ornamental seed head that's used in flower arranging that looks a bit like a brandy bottle. Is it crocus, tulip, or poppy? Uh, I'll, go, I'll go for poppy. Um, it's the only one I can remember our mum playing with when she was doing some flower arranging. You're not sure, but you're right. Yes! <laughs> That's all right then, so we've got some evergreen shrubs. Okay, so. so we need an invader. Oh, and look, you probably recognise this Hi, one. Hi, Rich. How you doing, mate? <laughs> You're full of energy. You're meant to be working hard over there. Well, I should be. All that concrete I've been pouring in. <laughs> Better not be. Give us a clue, Rich. What's in it? No. How's me wall? It's, um... Gone? In the skipper, uh, <gasps> I think. Shh, don't say too much. Do you want to take these plants away, then? Yep. Yeah, that's it, Bill, just down there, yeah? Well, that's nice, isn't it? That's old chimney pot. It's nice to find stuff like that in the garden. Mmm, can't have a think about that.
Right at the front of this raised area, we're putting a sunken pond, which is going to make a great feature. It's perfectly square, strong geometry, and around it we're paving with these lovely old brick paviers that were already on site, so they're reclaimed, and they're very, very tough, really hard-wearing, very nice material to use. Now, a lot of people get confused because if you haven't got a completely rectangular or square space, they say, well, how do you know where to make you know, that centre line? Well, what we've done is draw a line right through the middle here and square everything up to that. Whereas the planting, OK, it's going to be slightly irregular shaped planting areas, but once it's softened up, you're going to lose all those lines. So don't worry about the edges so much. Now, Dave. Hello, mate. And Richard. Hiya. Doing a good job here. Looking really good. How come you're laying the bricks? I thought he should be laying the bricks. He's a bricklayer, isn't he? Well, he doesn't like it, see, because I, I have to lay it on his dry muck, semi-dry right. muck. It's like a floor screed. Right, OK. And a bricklayer is used to using nice wet muck, tapping nice dry bricks. Right. So Not you're just to... passing in the bricks at the moment, then? Just laboring for us, yeah. Yeah, very nice. Now, what about this pond, though, Dave? The sunken pond. You were groaning about it earlier. He's going, oh, oh sunken pond is a nightmare to build. Well, you've got to complain a bit. I'll keep you on your toes. Just dug a perfectly square hole and then put a wooden frame around the outside of the hole. Yeah. Concrete up to the level of the wooden frame, yeah. drop the liner in, bricks all around. Yeah, now, yeah. Charlie would go mad if she saw what we'd done, because <laughs> we haven't filled the liner first, but... Uh, well, if we fill the liner first, we're going to get cement in there, it's going exactly. to be a bit of a nightmare. Exactly, and we'd have to find cement-loving fish. Right, yeah. I don't, I don't know of any. No, but mm. my concern is, is it all going to have gone off by the end of the day so we can fill it up with water? We can fill it up with water, but I don't want anybody walking on it. OK, fair all enough. Right. Yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. Rich is your... Cousin? Nephew. Nephew. Yep. So your uncle... Uncle Lee. Uncle Lee. And he calls it me. Yeah? Yeah, all the time. And how did you manage to drag him into doing all the work? Because he's deft as a brush and he, he didn't understand what I, was, what I was asking him to do, to be honest. <laughs> so you <laughs> twisted truth. his arm? Yeah, a little bit of... I said I'd buy him the odd pint. So these are all perennials. That means they all die down in the winter and then come back up in the spring. Mm -hmm. Elka millimollis, it's got lovely leaves and that's the main reason for growing it. It's sort of mid-green and it gets all these little droplets of water on them. And the reason it's called Elka Millo is after alchemy. Um, and the alchemists thought that they could get silver out of it, mainly because of the little droplets on there. Hookeras, there's loads of different types of hookeras now. They all tend to have these sort of ruffled leaves that are a purpley colour. There's one or two now that have got a yellow colour to them. And again, it's a type of plant that's grown for the foliage effect. Stays nice and low, can go in shade or full sun as long as the soil doesn't dry out. Mm -hmm. And then we've got this one here, Helleniums. Now, Helleniums are great because they're known for flowering very late in the season, so giving you a lot of colour in the garden. And they've got these gorgeous daisy-type flowers. So a great plant. Might need staking, though, because it can get quite tall, so you might need to put some canes in to hold it up. Here we go, then. <laughs> You're enjoying this, aren't oh, you? It's the best bit. Which fruit makes up the biggest single fruit crop in the world? Is it apple, banana, or grapes? I'll, I'll take a look. I'll go for the grape because there's just so much wine lakes about. They're the grape. Well done! Oh, great. <laughs> Fantastic! Ooh, you, you can sit and relax oh, now. You. I'm going to see much. what's happening in the garden, okay. mate. Thank you, mother. <laughs> Well, I'm just going to take these lovely Helleniums to the garden, but if you think these gardening questions are easy, how about testing yourself out and going onto the BBC Garden Invaders website and you could win some gardening goodies. Well, look at this beautiful Helleniums. Not on the what? I, I'm not, not on the paper. On the sand. <laughs> Charlie. <laughs> You should know better. Give me those. Nice, no, beautiful. Helenium. They're lovely, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, you shouldn't... Dave, look, you've really made him grumpy excuse now. Me, excuse me. He's grumpy enough as it is. Have you left enough slack on that liner? Yes, don't worry. Yeah, don't we're doing worry. It. Don't worry. <laughs> you we, know what you're doing. We're doing it our own way. We're going okay. our own way, Charlie. Oh, shut There's up. different ways of doing water features, you know. Oh. Yeah, there are. Right, yeah. then, uh, where's your helper, then? I think he's mixing up. Oh, is he? Well, you better be mixing up. Poor anyway. so lad, we need, we need making him labour. Now. Another yeah, mix. Semi-dry, we like it. Semi-dry. Oh, dry. easy access, boys and girls. Yeah, Come on, then, for right. the person that's doing all the mixing. Oh, you watch your step. It's a bit wobbly. Hello, Richard. There's your long way back. Here's Richard. Hiya. Hello. Yeah, I just turn this oh, off. Oh, no, I can't hear you. 
Yeah, that's better. Do you know what you're doing? A semi-dry screed for dive. All right. So this is ballast and cement, this is it? This is screeding sand and cement. Six and one. And what, do you vibrate it down or firm it? Yeah, you can whack it or just tap it down, um, and it's ideal for the slab. Perfect. Oh, yep. So he said, hurry up, because he needs another load. Right, <laughs> okay. I'll plaid on. Look at that lovely sheen on there. A bit of a glisten there. That would hold the uh, hold me. the sunlight on. Are you on. muttering away to yourself? Like oh, oh yes, I am. I'm, yeah. I do apologise. <laughs> now um, my nose has been put out of joint. You know, I've just gone over there, and they've done things in your garden that they really should ask me about. Like what? I can't tell you, but um, phew. so I'm not a happy bunny. But I am with these lovely climbers. Got some gorgeous climbers. Oh, Campus's radicans flava. Mm -hmm. So normally it's known as trumpet vine, yep. and normally you see it growing, and it's got orange flowers. But this one's got like lemon yellow ones. Quite a vigorous climber. Needs quite a bit of space, and it twines by using its stems. Likes a sunny position, so a wall or a fence that's facing the mm -hmm. sun. Otherwise, it won't flower properly. Then we've got Tracleosperum jasminoides, which was the one you were fondling that's got the glossy green leaves. It's evergreen. It has beautiful star white flowers that are really strongly scented, smelling of jasmine. And then the last climber is Clematis viticella, Madame Julia Corrivon, and it's got those lovely cross-shaped purple flowers. And it's a good Clematis because it's quite resistant to Clematis wilt, which is one of the problems with them. Flowers late in the summer, so with the viticellas, you hack them right down to a foot high in February. Then they grow like mad and then flower and you can cut the flowers and they keep well as a cut flower. So that's quite handy, isn't it? Very nice. Now this last question is a much more of a horticultural one. And you know you won those lovely boxes, hedging plants? Yes, I do, yeah. Well, we've got some different hedging plants here. Mm. We've got pyracantha, we've got a variegated privet, and then we've got cross cupresso cyparis leylandii. It's easy for you to say. <laughs> Now, what I want you to tell me is which of these needs clipping a lot to keep it under control? I mean, my mum's got a privet. I'm forever going to go around and cut it for her. Uh -huh. However, we do live in Birmingham, and there's a certain area, a certain famous road, where there's the Leylandii Wars, and it's that one, because it grows like mad. That Leylandii. is very true. Well done, Thank 100%. You. Hurrah. you think you're finished. We've got oh. a project for you over here. Oh, all right. Come Thank on. Thank you very much. Right, that's it. Offer it up, as they say. Dr Bill. He's got a PhD, this man, you know. He's not just a pretty face. Anyway, there you go. See, I like to think that I invented the term the outdoor room, but of course I didn't. It's been around a lot longer than I have. And in fact, the Victorians were the first ones who sort of brought the interior outside and vice versa. They'd take their ferneries inside, but they used to use the garden as a social place. And that's what we want Lee to start doing. So this is going to become a quite a formal garden. And what we've done is make a lovely entrance here with this off the peg pergola. You just walk through here into the archway and into this fantastic space that is really very formal. So we're putting this trellising all the way around. It's going to create the intimacy and add to the privacy. And uh, oh, fantastic! Lee's won loads of climbers, which is great. So they're going to go all the way around the trellising and green it all up. And it's going to give a lovely feeling of seclusion in there and become a sociable place to party. So all in all, this garden's looking pretty good. We've got some height, we've got some paving. We're getting there. OK, then, Mr. 100% Man, what's That's your me. DIY like? I'm superb. OK, we've got a nice flat pack bench here. Take it away. Oh, and you might need those. Thank you very much. Oh, great. Hello, Mr. Swift. Hello, Charlie. Good timing. Going? Got a job for you. Oh. Look at this. Beautiful chimney stack. Look. Got his name on it and everything. Oh, it's a Dalton. Dalton and Co. Oh, and fancy. Posh, eh? Yes. Let me Some have a look. IVs. Yeah, but it's got a big hole all the way down it, Joe. Yes, yeah, so that's to let the smoke out. It's a chimney. Oh, 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 yeah, well, exactly. Out. <laughs> and some candles. Now, the Victorians were into their arrangements, you know, simple IVs, candles, you know, they like burning candles and stuff like that. Okay, so do you think you can go for an aromatherapy sort of Victorian thing <laughs> with the chimney stack? I'll leave it to you. I think you ought to go back to the garden. <laughs> All right, taking my time. Quality work, don't you? This is a design error. We 
With this garden, I've gone for a very formal layout using strong geometry, good proportion. But when it, when it comes to the plants, you can sort of play around with it a lot more. And there's different ways that you can go. So what I'm doing is I'm adding to the symmetry and the formality with plants like this. Good evergreen structure, a bay lollipop. And we've got two of them, one on each side. So it's really good symmetry there. And then there's other good plants really good for structure, like these two abelia. Again, one on either side, add to the symmetry. But from then on, I'm going to loosen it all up. I'm going to use plants like this, this heuchera and the Alcamilla mollis, which is much more frothy and looser. And then we're going to throw in a bit of colour as well. This helenium looks fantastic. And again, we're going to dot them round rather than going too symmetrical with them. So here we're getting a really good balance, good evergreen structure, but lots going on in the summer as well. Oh, what a surprise. Uh -huh. Hello oh, you're there. finished then? I have, You I'm must finished. be exhausted. No wonder you sat down I'm relaxing. Shattered. I'm, I'm, I'm worn out, I'm yeah. worn out. Oh, look, I have something for you here. Oh, thank you very much for me. You can keep it as a memento. Of you? No, of the bench. Oh, fair enough. Now, at this point, I'd normally say, oh, go inside and rest, but I'm... you're already in mode. Well, fair enough. I just need a paper and a cup of tea and I'm away then. Oh, OK, all okay. right, yeah. If you can arrange that for me, thank you very much. Give us a shout when the garden's done. So we've got this trellis all the way around this part of the garden and it's looking great, adds real height. But what we need to do is get some climbers up it, just cover it with climbers, make it really lovely and green. So we've got a good selection here. This is a great one, an evergreen Trachylospermum jasminoides or the star jasmine. It's clothed down to the ground with foliage, which is what I really like about it. A nice, neat plant, because a lot of climbers get a bit scruffy up at the top. And then in the summer, you get these small jasmine-like flowers, strongly scented. It's a really good way of getting scent into the garden with climbers as well. Now, along here, we've got another really lovely climber. Great foliage, and look, it's even got a flower on it quite late in the year. This is Campsis flava. Again, very rampant. It's going to be right up here very quickly, and you chop it down to the ground in the winter if you want, or you can just leave it on. In the milder parts of the country, it'll do fine. In really cold parts of the country, it will die back, so just hack it back, but it will be back again next year. Clematis are really good in this location because their roots are going to be in the shade and their tops are going to be in the sun, just how they like it. And this one's called Madame Julia Corivon. It's a viticella variety. And look, it's in full bloom and it's absolutely gorgeous. And in the spring, late spring, just cut it back really hard to about a foot to two open buds and it will just come up again and flower again that year. Now here, this is not fancy at all, this one. This is your common honeysuckle. It hasn't got a fancy name, it's just finished flowering, but next year it'll be fantastic and it'll fill this whole garden with scent. What more can you want? So there's the full space, and I've got lots of holes around the edge so it drains properly. Then what I have done is potted up this container, a plastic container that's going to sit in there. Now, Joe gave me some very boring ivies, so I've whipped some of his other plants. So we've got an ivy that trails, we've got a hookah that's nice and fat and round, and then we've got one of the caryopteris to give a bit of height and colour. And it's going to sit in there. Now, the great thing about having it in containers like that is you can change them over. So you can use spring bedding, summer bedding, bulbs, and it never looks boring. And so Joe's not too upset, I am going to use one of the candles. Well, Rich, look at this. Isn't it smart? Lovely. You can smoke things in the top. You can cook down here. And it would just look so posh on that patio area, wouldn't it? It would. All you got to do is answer a question on gardening. Right. I know you're a fab <laughs> bricklayer. How's your gardening knowledge? Not very good. Not very good. No, right, I'll then. give it my best. OK. He has taken photos of it, just in case you get it wrong. Right. Just to rub it in every time I go around. Osier is the name of which family of trees whose branches are used for making baskets? Is it willow, sycamore or box? Um, a guess, and it is a guess, willow. And you say willow because? Um, just for the sheer fact that it's probably the only one I can relate to furniture, basically. Well done, fantastic. Have I got this? You, <laughs> <Hey>! <laughs> you can breathe now. <laughs> well, Lee. Yes, Charlie. Are you excited? I'm 
I'm ecstatic. Now, what was the garden like this morning when we turned up? Well, it was a magical vista. Uh, it <laughs> oh, was, that's uh, a flash word. No, it was... I, I just got it prepared for my brassicas. Uh, <laughs> I'll be having touched that. <laughs> um, God, it was worse than a builder's site. There was tumbleweed drifting across it. I had plants <laughs> that I didn't know what they were. There was weeds bigger than a tree. Uh, it was basically my bonfire site. It was dreadful. Anything would be better than that, let's be honest. OK. Do you want to open your eyes? Are you sure? Yeah, very sure. <laughs> that is... that is fantastic. You designed that? That's super. And you've done that? Oh, good God. Yeah, well, everyone. We all you've got done that in a day? No, we've been here for four weeks. <laughs> you must have been... That, yeah. <laughs> honestly, that is... That, that is superb. Nice pond. I think he likes it. Water feature. That, that was the bit yeah. I was a bit and the, uh, nose out of joint. Yeah, we did no. it all by ourselves without Charlie, that <laughs> water feature. Is it heated? I mean... <laughs> it was <laughs> <'cause> <laughs> a hot tub. Yeah, yeah. No. Oh, don't push your luck. <laughs> <laughs> so you put a central arch in, yeah? yeah. And the climb's going to come up and over that, and then the trellis gives you a really good sense of enclosure. Yeah. You know, so you're going to feel like you're in a different part of the garden completely yeah. when you're in there. The pond, nice and formal. Yeah? Lovely. Now, don't fall in it when you're drunk. <laughs> as if, as if. Where's my wall going? It's gone. Yeah. Oh, God, it's hit. <laughs> it is in the That skip. took me years to do, that did. <laughs> yeah, not surprised. No, that, that two is, seconds to knock it down. That is excellent. That really is excellent. How does it feel to have it done in a day? Well, I'm... What can I say? I'm, I'm just totally... I am gobsmacked. I'm lost for words, which is a surprise. But how you've done that in a day is beyond me. I mean, considering what it was, superb. It's great. Fair play, yeah. Excuse me, I've been working very hard. That's what I mean, you? I've been working hard too, you know. And that wart feature I created was amazing. Oh, I did the wart no, feature. I did the wart feature, didn't I, for once? See you next time. You bye. said it wasn't going to work. No, yeah. come on, stop. It was great, that wart feature.